Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to talk about uh, solar desalination. I'm sure anybody who has lived in Melbourne <coughs> in the past <coughs> excuse me, few months has heard about the desalination plant which is going to be installed in Wontagi. Uh, that works on reverse osmosis. And uh, reverse osmosis is simply taking the salt water in general or seawater and under high pressure use some kind of a very fine membrane at a pressure of like 50, 60 bars, uh, which would be 50, 60 atmospheric pressure equivalent to the pressure that you would experience at a depth of about 600 meters in water in the sea. And then producing uh, fresh water and separating fresh water from, from salt water. The system is very simple, but there is one drawback. It uses electricity, very expensive environmentally electricity. For every 1,000 liters of fresh water but reverse osmosis, you would uh, need at least between 6 to 10 kilowatt hour of, of energy. And although it said that it would be compensated by some wind farms, but then that's an important matter which needs to be considered. And the same system would be, is also operating in Western Australia. Now at RMIT University, we are looking at uh, a more traditional system of desalination, which is uh, thermal desalination. I'm sure all of you uh, have observed boiling of a <clears throat> pot of water on a stove. Well, if inside that pot, if you have got salt water, that vapor which is produced is totally free of salt. And if you can condense it, there you have got fresh water. But the problem is that this would be very, very inefficient. Now, this, the, at the middle, the thermal desalination plant that we are uh, basically developing at RMIT is a system which is very efficient, um, possibly several times at least, uh, the traditional desalination systems, and it's also compatible with uh, solar thermal. On the right-hand side, we have, we have got here evacuate tube collectors, you know, which are uh, more of a traditional uh, solar water heater. But on the left-hand side, we are showing you uh, a different type of solar collectors. We call them uh, solar ponds. And um, maybe I go to the next slide. Now, this is <clears throat> a tank that we have installed at uh, RMIT at Bandura campus. It's about 50 square meters, 2.5 meters deep. It's, it's tank, it's made of concrete. And what it is, it's just got water, water and salt. But then we have got a stratification. In other words, at the surface, the water has got very low salt. As you go down, it becomes more saline. At the bottom, it's saturated. So at the surface, you're looking at a density of about maybe 1,020, 30. At the bottom, you have got density of about 1,200. Highly dense at the bottom. We have stopped the natural convection, which takes place in the body of water. And uh, as a result of that, the bottom of this pond uh, is about uh, gets to 60, 70 degrees Celsius. Even we can boil water. This is a solar pond in pyramid here in salt affected areas of North Victoria. That's where there is plenty of salt water in the aquifer. They don't have access to seawater, but they have got access to lots of sunshine and lots of uh, water at low salinity in the aquifer, only two meters below the ground surface. A source of solar thermal desalination in North Victoria. Thank you.